At the Paris Motor Show, I already had a closer look at the exterior and interior of the new Mercedes-Benz GLE, but I never drove the car. But this is something going to change today here in beautiful Texas, United States. Today I'm going to drive the new Mercedes-Benz GLE 300D format. So now let's have a closer look at the design of the new GLE. And of course, we do start with the front. The first thing you really see instantly is the new grille. Uh, very important, that is the typical new Mercedes SUV grille that comes with these two parallel bars here. But if you order the um, AMG line or the AMG version, you then will have one with only one bar, and that really gives the car the extra sporty look then. But to make the car even more sporty, we do find these big two power domes here at the hood. And very important, that car is only 12 mil wider than its predecessor, so we're now talking about 1 meter 94 in width. But I think it looks a lot more solid, and one reason for that is we do have completely different wheel arches. They really give the car a very solid look. Um, another feature which is, which is brand new and I think really nice, the car now features as standard full LED headlights with LED daytime running lights, but our car is featuring the so-called multi-beam LED system with the ultra range high beam on board, but that only comes for extra costs. The new GLE now is 4 meters 92 in length and that is 10.5 centimeters more than its predecessor and that with a height of the car which is a bit less than with the predecessor as well and on top of this we do have a extended wheelbase. This now is nearly three meters long and that means we're talking about eight centimeters more and that together really gives the car I think a lot more sporty look and the sporty look will be underlined by the new rims because now you can have that car with rims from 18 up to 22 inch. Our car features 21 but I think that still looks very solidly on the road. Another thing that had really changed regarding to the design is see here Oh, nearly all the lines are gone. So the, the car is now playing with uh, light and shadow, but you do not find this, let's say, a bit odd design that we know from the predecessor. And one thing I really like is that the line which was here over the wheel arches is completely gone. And that really gives the car, from my perspective, a really new and fresh look. And another thing I really do like is the C-pillar here because that is quite flat. And that combined with a black glass behind gives the car an impression, it looks a bit like a coupe. And this is something I really do like with the car. So overall, I think a lot more sporty and modern than the old GLE. To give the car a bit more of a rough look, you will find these cladding here at the wheel arches as well as at the side of the car. Very important, they as standard come in gray, but you can also have them depending on the model and the engine in the same color as your car. Looking at the rear of the GLE, you will find less lines, less yeah, edgy things. And that I think makes the car a lot more modern. Very important regarding to being modern is we now have full LED taillights as standard with the car as well. And very important, they're split it in here. And that gives us this triangle form or shape right here. And this is something you have to get used to because you will find that with more and more SUVs from Mercedes-Benz. Another thing which I really like from the rear is you see these shoulders, these massive shoulders very nicely from the rear with these wheel arches here. And that really gives the car from the rear a very solid, very sporty look. And on top of this, yes, you do find two of these exhausts here, but they are fake. But nevertheless, even they are fake, I think it looks simply great. What are the biggest changes you did to the car when we look at it? Because I think it looks a lot more sporty than the old one. So the biggest thing for us was, in terms of central purity, make it voluptuous. You know, give it really soft surfaces and model it. So the surfaces are being modeled by light and shadow more than by just lines. Okay. lines or things like that. Um, the car now features a lot longer wheelbase and how did you get it to make the car even look more sportier even though you have completely different dimensions? You know the longer wheelbase first of all you know enhances the interior space but for us in exterior we have to give it bigger wheels because it somehow has to work with the proportions so we are really happy that we got the bigger wheels on the car now it's the biggest wheel diameter in the whole segment and that makes the car look even more bulky and more strong. It's, it's yeah, the muscles on the wheel and that's a good. Uh, when we talk about the design of the car, that is this, let's say, standard version, but there will be an AMG line or AMG version. What will be the difference yeah. to that car then? Especially uh, for the US market, you know, we thought we'll give it a little bit more sporty look with the AMG. So customers uh, choosing an SUV with an extremely sporty look, they should go for the AMG and they have like air intakes in the front, air curtain in the front. And you know you have wind separation edges on the rear, so the whole car with a one-bar grille looks definitely a little bit more sporty, aggressive than the Mercedes version to it. 
The bigger interior space of the new GLE, of course, you find in the boot as well. That car now offers between 825 up to 2,055 liters of maximum boot capacity, depending on how you fold the seats. And that really is a big amount. It's the same as this big pile of pumpkins here. At the moment, there are four different drivetrains available for the new GLE, which are three diesel, one petrol. The diesel engines, they offer a power range between 245 up to 330 um, horsepower. Very important is the smallest diesel is a four-cylinder. The other two, they are six-cylinder engines. And then there is the petrol, which is the car we're driving, actually. This is the GLE 450. Very important with that car, it only, not only delivers 367 horsepower and 500 newton meters of maximum torque, it also features the 48 volt system. And that means you can have with the EcoBoost another 22 horsepower and more important, 250 newton meters of extra torque. And this is something when you accelerate from low revs, you really can feel instantly. And very important with all the new GLEs, they all feature the 9G Tronic automatic gearbox. And of course, all wheel drivers available as well. Let's talk about the interior of the Mercedes GLE. And I really think that Mercedes did everything right with that car. We do have this very big instrument cluster here, which features two 12.1 inch screens combined under a glass sheet. So we really have a big wide screen in that car. It of course features MBUX, so it really delivers everything you want. And very important here, we do have the next level of a head-up display on board and this really looks in front of you uh, projected on the road like a white screen as well so this is really something very very nice to have and very nice to look at so you can really focus on the road with the car and that makes absolutely sense regarding to the rest of the interior the car really is a mixture out of luxury and a modern designed piece of art I really like how I sit in the car. It's extremely comfortable. I have so many different kinds of uh, screens I can use. I have so many different, uh, so many options to really modify the screens and the look of the car the way I want it. And so this car really provides you with absolutely everything you want while driving through the countryside or being on a motorway, even for a very, very long trip. The amount of space the new GLE offers here at the interior is absolutely fantastic. So me, as a very tall person, nearly two meters high, I can sit inside of the car very comfortably and I have loads of space. And this is the same for my co-pilot. But more important is the car grows a lot in length. And this is something you can feel at the second seat row a lot. And that means with that car, that offers enough space that I can sit easily inside of the second row right behind myself. The drive of the GLE is absolutely nice. So the, how the how the brakes, the gas, the steering and the suspension works together is really, really very, very nice and an absolute pleasure to drive. And that means you can drive the car very comfortably and very easy. And on the other hand, you can always give the car the extra kick and drive a bit more sporty and you always feel safe inside of the car. The only thing I do not like so much is the angle um, of the steering. When I drive in very tight turns, I think I should turn the, uh, no, I have to turn the steering wheel a little bit more than I want to, to keep it comfortable. But I think that's maybe just my personal opinion and maybe you can get used to this easily. The choices for assistance systems at the GLE are endless. An active blind spot assist with exit warning is available as well as a lane change assist, which allows the vehicle to automatically change lanes when the indicator is touched. But also a traffic sign recognition, an active parking assistant or a 360 degree camera is offered. There is one thing I really do like a lot and this is the, let's say, partly autonomous drive. And with that one especially, I really do like the adaptive cruise control with the active lane assist because that not only works extremely smooth and very, very nicely. On top of this, if you are um, heading a traffic jam, the car really does not only adjust the speed um, 
to the to the guy in front of you it also when it comes to very low speed goes absolutely to the side to give let's say cars that will that, that are on their way for help people in emergency can just pass you and whenever your um, traffic jam goes a bit more fast so you're getting into standard traffic again the car then automatically goes to the middle of the road um, again so it drives normally and that is really something I do like a lot because it's not only comfort it's also extra safety. Mercedes wants to deliver a very modern car with a GLE and this is the reason why you only find USB-C ports inside of that car and that on the other hand means if you have an old mobile device and you want to connect it with that you need an adapter or you better buy a new one. As an SUV, the GLE also works well off-road. With a torque-on-demand system and a reduction gearbox, the new GLE is more off-roader than ever before. A real world premiere is the so-called free ride mode. Here the GLE starts swaying, for instance, to drive out of loose sand after got stuck in the desert. The new GLE is the only car in its segment with a real active suspension. So next to me is Simon Kern. Uh, Simon, you're one of the developers of the new suspension system. You offer a standard um, suspension, you offer air suspension, and you offer the new so-called e-active body control. What are the biggest differences between this, these three um, systems? So the first system is the steel suspension. You have a steel spring and so you can't level the car and you have a passive damper so you can't adjust the damping level. The next step is the air spring. With that you can level the car and individual control the damping valves for compression and rebound. But when we talk about the top version, the e-active body control, that, car, that really offers something completely different and new. What is that? Yes. You can individual apply forces to each wheel, independent of direction. And so we can compensate roll, pitch and even squat. And um, I, I read that this, the car is scanning the surface in front of the car. So what does that mean and how does it work? It works with our multi-purpose stereo camera, which scans the road in front of the wheel. And the main difference is you can act in advance instead of just react. Oh, so that means with a new GLE, I can drive the car like flying with a carpet. And we're going to try that out quite soon. Now I've grabbed one of the cars which is featuring the so-called e-active body control, which means a real active suspension. And the car now really scans the surface of the road in front of me. And that really is a great feeling. It's so smooth, so easy. And it's a lot better than the air suspension, which is already great. And another very important feature here is we just activated the mode, which is called curve. And that means that that car really goes into the curve, a bit like driving a motorcycle. And with that on board, even with that big, very heavy car, driving small curves and turns is an absolute pleasure. With the Mercedes 300D we drove, we do have a car that offers us for a 245 horsepower up, but out of a four-cylinder engine. And I think that's more than enough power, but I really do prefer a six-cylinder because I really like the culture of these engines. And this is the reason why we're now driving the 450, which is a petrol engine, uh, three, cylinder, uh, three liter six cylinder, and that offers us 367 horsepower, but I think more important is 500 newton meters of torque. And very interestingly, this car here features the 48 volt system. So we do have the so-called Echo Boost system on board, and that then delivers only a little bit more of horsepower, but up to 250 newton meters of extra torque. So this really is something you can feel while driving. And I really have to say, I think a six cylinder engine does fit a GLE a little bit more or a little bit better than a four cylinder. The most important competitors of the GLE are clearly the new Volkswagen Touareg, available from around 58,000 euros, and the also newly launched BMW X5, which is available from around 70,000 euros. With a base price of just under 66,000 euros, the GLE finds itself in the middle. The basic version of the Mercedes is powered by a 245 horsepower 2 liter 4 cylinder diesel. Both the Volkswagen and the BMW are starting directly with a six-cylinder diesel engine, but with a similar output. In contrast to the BMW X5 and the Volkswagen Touareg, the Mercedes GLE is currently not available with rear axle steering. 
That was my first test drive with the new Mercedes-Benz GLE and overall I have to say yes, I really do like the car a lot. I think the exterior design really changed completely and that now looks like a very modern, very stylish car. And when you look to the interior, that has completely changed. We now have MBUX as standard on board. We do have this maximum widescreen inside of the car and then you do have these extra space now so this really is a completely new but i think a very very nice car and the drive of the car is absolutely fantastic i'm not sure if you really need this super extra plus suspension but even with a standard air suspension the car drives so comfortably and if you want sporty as well very important that's car, that car starts um, in germany from about 65,000 euros onwards but i think if you want to have the big engine if you wanted all the extras you better think about a number with six digits but that's a mercedes-benz but i have to say if you do have the money and if you're looking for a modern suv you definitely have to have a test drive with that car